Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Drunk with Mr. Sepulveda. I'm Mr. Sepulveda, and today starts my second episode of my Dragon Triple Feature series. Last week, I turned DC superheroes into dragons. If you missed that episode, you may want to check that out before you check this one out, because it's a continuation episode, at least story-wise. Um, and in today's episode, I'll be turning famous cartoons into dragons. And I'll be bringing back our latest narrator, Rachel Peth. So, without further ado, uh, all you gotta do is just sit back, relax, and enjoy the episode. Dragon Log 078. It has been three weeks since I saw the Kryptian Super Sky Dragon. The strength I got from him has come in handy on more than one occasion. You see, I tried returning the horse to the old hermit who led me to the Sky Dragon, but he told me that the Dragonborn would need it more than he would. So, I got on the horse and began riding west. We came across some crazy beasts out there. I fought a giant scorpion with my bare hands and I was able to hold my own pretty easily. I was able to lift him up into the air and slam him down onto his backside. The cracking sound he made when he landed is a sound I hope to never hear again, but his body did provide tender meat for the first several days of the trip. We then traveled across a desert land where we came across a large cactus monster. Yeah, I know how that sounds, but it's 100% true, just ask the horse if you don't believe me. Anyway. The cactus monster was wearing boxing gloves and tried to knock me out. I used my newfound strength and blocked one fist with both hands, only being dragged through the sandy ground just a little. I then jumped onto the cactus's glove and ran across his arm, avoiding the needles. When I got close enough to its face, I unleashed my sword, jumped into the air, and struck a mighty blow down the cactus's body. The shockwave from the swing sent a rippling shockwave across the sandy terrain. And just like that, the cactus monster was split in half. This newfound strength of mine makes it a little unfair, I suppose, when it comes to monster hunting, but the same can't be said when facing a dragon. The horse and I have grown pretty close to each other after facing so many creatures that I decided she needed a name, so I named her Pascarella, after the first dragonborn. Pascarella and I wandered until we were in the middle of nowhere under the light of the moon. We came across the sounds of snarls and roars. I told her to wait and I continued moving forward into the darkness. I then found the source of the sounds. I was met with a pack of draconic canines, a bunch of mutts with sharp fangs, sharp claws, great agility, and keen senses. As far as dragon breeds go, these were near the bottom of the list in terms of size and power. I charged green energy into my right hand and pointed it towards the pack. I shot out energy from my hand that I gained from the green glowing dragon, and the entire pack of draconic canines fled with their tails between their legs. All, except for one who stared at me unfazed. This Dracona canine was different from the pack, displaying his courage and bravery. I drew my sword and shield and prepared for battle. I took one step forward and the creature quickly ran towards me. I didn't expect the agility of this dragon breed to be so quick. The Dracona canine snatched my shield in a flash with its bare teeth. It swung it into the ground about a hundred feet away from where I stood. The dragon looked at me and I felt a sense of unease about it. I shook the feeling and proceeded towards the beast. I had both hands on my trusted sword and ran in to strike it as I did the cactus monster a week ago. With my sword and strength, how could I possibly lose? Well, my arrogance got the better of me. I swung my sword and the draconic canine dashed to the left and swung its tail just underneath the armored plate that protects my chest. The impact forced me to drop my sword and I was thrown across the ground. I normally don't feel very much pain since absorbing the gifts from the Kryptonian Super Sky Dragon. However, I learned that I will still feel pain when I battle a dragon. I dusted myself off and began thinking how I was going to survive this. The Draconic Canine looked at me again and stared deeper into my soul. This began to feel almost too normal after experiencing this sensation with three dragons before this one. The dragon then spoke into my head and said, You're a weak dragonborn. It did not take me long to assess your weaknesses. The dragon's voice caused the hairs on my arms to rise. I felt that he spoke the truth, but I could not determine the weaknesses he spoke of. I have gained the abilities of the dragons. I can breathe underwater, shoot energy from my hands, and have the strength of the mightiest dragon. How could this draconic canine believe that I am weak? By the thoughts circling around your mind, you do not quite understand how this could be possible. I disarmed you in a matter of moments and struck you down, dragonborn. This is because you have two major flaws. If you cannot tell me what those flaws are, you will not live to see tomorrow. The draconic canine then charged at me and I reacted by shooting out the glowing green energy towards him. He was able to easily evade my attacks as if he knew where I was going to attack. I tried running for my shield but he blocked my path and tried to bite my head off. I was able to get my hands up and keep his mouth from chomping my head. 
but he then used his paws to strike me from the side. I flew across the ground until I came to a complete stop when my body ran into a tree. Pascarella came next to me and began to neigh and stomp her hooves. In her own way, I think she wanted me to get up and keep fighting, so I got back up. The draconic canine continued to stare at me and I noticed my sword and shield just 50 feet away from each other. I ran towards my sword, thinking about how one lucky blow could change the outcome of this battle. I ran, and Pascarella let me ride her, and the dragon just waited. He stared at me and then charged at me. I was very close to the sword when I made the last minute decision to try for my shield. The dragon reacted quickly and I held up my shield to protect myself and Pascarella. The dragon then roared. The shock of the roar shook my arms as the draconic canine was overhead. Why did you change your mind, Dragonborn? I told him. I determined my two weaknesses, Dragon. The first is that I've become very reliant on my abilities gained from the other dragons. I've become too cocky and arrogant because these gifts are beyond my wildest imaginations. The second weakness is one that I didn't realize until just this moment. Dragons can read each other's thoughts and intentions. I kept thinking about my sword so you believed I would try to slay you. My true objective was the shield so I could protect myself and my horse companion. The dragon laughed, and the rest of the Draconic Canine pack came circling us both. Dragonborn, you are very interesting. You displayed true courage tonight, Dragonborn. When things were not going your way, fear was the reaction your body underwent. However, you made the decision to choose courage and bravery when you faced me, when everything was against you. It is because of this courage you displayed that I shall grant you my abilities. Pink essence flew from the draconic canine into me, and my body began to feel different. When I opened my eyes, I could see the world as if it were daytime. I could hear the howling of a dragon just a few hundred miles away. I could even smell a sea dragon from a thousand miles away. Dragon Log 107 Looks like these new gifts will make it much easier to locate dragons. However, I do not wish to overly rely on my draconic gifts. After facing the draconic canine, I have learned that over-reliance on these gifts may be my downfall, and the ability to synchronize my thoughts with the other dragons will put me at a large disadvantage. These are thoughts to ponder on as I continue my journey. A month after my near defeat with the draconic canine, I had been tracking the sounds of the howling dragon with my new hearing abilities. Interestingly enough, the sounds only came out at night and never during the day. This has halted my progress with locating the mysterious dragon. The message boards from many towns describe the eerie sound being heard deep within the forests. I camped out with Pascarella and never saw the dragon with my own eyes. However, I did come across a mysterious green goo that covered the remains of dead animals, trunks of trees, and scattered around the forest floor. I was able to locate the goo at several other locations throughout various forests. Using my newly found sense of smell, I was able to track the dragon's movements heading north. It was dark at the center of the forest and the moon was in its waning crescent form. The rustling of bushes made me a little uneasy with my enhanced sense of hearing. I grabbed a sample of the green goo from around the forest and put it to my nose. My nose was able to identify the unique odor from the goo and a similar smell coming from just a mere 50 feet away. I crouched to muffle my steps and approached with caution. I had my shield readied and my sword drawn. I lifted my head to peer over the bushes and in front of me was a dragon I did not expect to ever find. It was the rare phantom dragon. This specter of a dragon had very long limbs and green glowing wings. The green goo that I found was ectoplasm. It all began to make sense. The phantom dragon has two pointed horns and very bright green eyes. I witnessed as the phantom dragon floated above the ground without the use of its wings and it went through the trees without physically touching them, almost as though it phased right through them. I remember hearing legends of the phantom dragon whose main goal was to absorb other ghost dragons. Its duty was to protect all life and so it wandered the world in search of these creatures. I once thought it to be mere fantasy, but right before my eyes the phantom dragon did just that. It began to howl the familiar sound I had been hearing these past three weeks and it absorbed a ghost dragon directly into its chest. Astonished by what I saw and believing in the stories now to be more than just a mere myth, I sheathed my sword and put away my shield. If this phantom dragon's duty was to protect all life, then I should not approach it like an enemy. After all, I just want to learn from it and absorb some of its knowledge and essence to complete my goal and ultimately tackle my destiny as dragonborn. 
I approached the Phantom Dragon cautiously and knelt down before it. The Phantom Dragon turned around and looked over at me. He turned his head and spoke to me directly in my mind. He said, Dragonborn, I do not sense any malice or evil intent from you. This is a rare occurrence for me. The last Dragonborn I came across about 700 years ago attempted to fight me and paid with his life. I told the Phantom Dragon that I am different from my predecessor. I only wish to live up to my destiny as Dragonborn. I know I was born so I could bring peace to the world. The only way I can do that is by absorbing as much Dragon Essence as possible to face whatever dark threat will be endangering life on this planet. I like you, Dragonborn. Your heart is pure and your intentions are pure. I shall lend you my power in hopes that one day they will prove useful. The phantom dragon began to glimmer and its essence went inside my body and I began to feel different. Before I could say thank you to the dragon, he had already vanished. I instinctively took out my hand and placed it on a tree. My hand became intangible and faced through the tree. My body then followed and I was able to walk through it. My journey is far from over. I have collected the essence of five dragons since I set off on my journey. I have 15 more to go and I believe my encounters with the dragons won't be as easy as this one. I'll continue to hone my skills if I am to truly protect this world and usher in a new era of peace. I hope you liked the episode. If you did, please leave this video a like. If you're enjoying my Dragon's Triple Feature series so far, please comment below to let me know which dragon has been your favorite so far. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing so you can stay up to date with my latest story and speed paint episodes. Next week is the conclusion of my Dragon Triple Feature series, and I'm very excited about this one. I'll be taking characters from Spider-Man and turning them into dragons. Can't wait to see you then. Y'all have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye.